The purpose of the next section is to teach you how to create a read transaction that updates multiple items in one request. In particular, you will learn about the seek character and move buffer pointer commands. Start by opening the existing transaction profile. From the transaction editor menu, select the new tag block icon to add a tag block to the project. Tag blocks are different from tag groups. The tag group allows you to group tags together, but each tag still has its own read and write transactions. In a tag block, there is one read transaction for all of the tags in the block. Each tag will still maintain its own write transaction. Assign a name to the tag block and then click the OK button to continue. Using the sample protocol, start adding tags for the items that are returned in the station barcode scan. The first tag is the quantity. The data type for this item is Word and the format is ASCII integer. Click the Format Properties button to define the format. In the protocol document, this item is defined as having a fixed length of 5 bytes. Normally, we would define the format properties as fixed length and pad it with zeros. However, barcodes do change, so to allow for changes in data size and length, we will treat it as a variable length data item. Uncheck the fixed length checkbox and check the parse to next delimiter box. Set the delimiter to a comma and verify that the read up to value is set to one byte from frame end. The delimiter field is dynamic, so if you hit the comma on the keyboard, the list will go to that character. Click OK to accept the format changes and close the dialog box. Then click OK in the add tag dialog to accept the new tag. You will notice that in our examples, the tags are read only. The default for a new tag is read write. It does not hurt to leave this default when you create your tags. Next, add a tag for the product name. This tag will be a string data type and an ASCII string format. It is variable length with a comma delimiter. The next tag is the product code. It is also a string data type and ASCII string format. This tag will also be variable length with a comma delimiter. Now you will add the units identifier tag. This is a string data type and ASCII format. This tag is also variable length with a comma delimiter. The last tag is the unit price. This tag is a float data type and the format is ASCII real. This tag will be variable length, but if you look at the protocol document, you will see that it is at the end of the packet and it is not followed by a comma like the rest of the items. We will use the end of packet terminator for this delimiter, which is the ETX or hex three. You have now entered all of the tags and can proceed with entering the actual transaction steps. When you select the tag block that you created, you will notice that there is a read transaction under the tag block. Select the read and then right click in the transaction area to add the first step. This will be a write character command to write the start byte. Next, add a write device ID command with a length of 2. Now write the scan station command. We know from the protocol that this is hex 1D. Now complete the read request with an invite. Next, enter the transmit command to send the request packet to the scanner. Now we need to handle the response from the device. Add a read response command that waits for the termination character of ETX. This is hex 3. Now that we have the read response from the station, we need to check to see if we got data back or if the station was empty. We know that the station will send a negative acknowledgement if there is nothing in the station to scan or it will send the data. To test the response, we will add the test character command after the read response command. First, we will set the value that we want to test for. In this case, it is hex 15. Next, you need to set the data source and position of the character or byte being tested. In this case, it is the read buffer, and we know from the protocol document that the fifth byte will be either a comma or the negative acknowledgement. So you will want to change the position from 1 to 5. Next, we must set the actions to be taken if the test is true or false. If the test is true and we get a negative acknowledgement, then we will end the transaction until the next scan of the station. If the test is false, then we will continue with processing the packet. There are many actions that can be done with test commands. For more details on test commands, you can see the Yukon driver help file. Click the OK button when you are done. We are treating the entire packet from the scanner like it is variable length delimited data. This means that we have to move the pointer around in the read buffer to be able to update the tags. To start, we will use the C character command to find the first comma in the response packet. Set the data source to read buffer and set the character to be sought for to be a comma. In case we do not find the failure, we will enter a label that the transaction will go to for processing. We will name the label C character. Click OK to accept the settings for the new command. You will get an error indicating that the label is not found yet. This is just an informational message. Click the OK button to continue. You will notice that there is an exclamation point next to the C character command in the transaction editor. 
This error will go away once we add the label to the project later. The C character command has moved the buffer pointer to the comma. We know from the protocol document that this should be byte 5. We need to be on the first byte of the data to update the tag though. To do this, we use the move command. Add the move buffer pointer command to the transaction. Set the data source to read buffer. The move type will be relative and the number of bytes to be moved will be 1. This will move the buffer pointer to byte 6, which should be the start of the data. Click the OK button to accept the command. Next, we are going to update the tag that is associated with the first data item. In the update tag command, you will notice that unlike when it is used on individual tags, in a tag block you see all the tags that were added to the tag block in the drop-down list. We know from the protocol document that the first data item should be the quantity, so we select that tag. The source is the read buffer. The other difference from when we did tag updates before is that we will not specify the byte to start updating from. Instead, we check the data starts at current buffer pointer checkbox. Click the OK button to accept the command. Now we repeat the cycle and add a C character command to go to the next comment and move the buffer pointer to the next byte. We can use the copy and paste feature to do this quickly. Then continue the process to update the remaining tags. Complete the update process with an in command. However, we are not done yet. We add the in command so that the transactions will not fall through into the next set of transactions. Remember that we set the character commands to send us the seek error label if it fails to find a comma in the read buffer. Add the seek error label to the transaction. Add a log event message to the transaction that will post an information message to the service event log. Lastly, add an in command to stop the transaction. Here is an explanation of how the buffer pointer works in a read buffer. Point 1 represents the location of the buffer pointer after the read buffer is updated. If no buffer commands are used, it will stay at byte 1. Point 2 represents the buffer pointer position after the first seek command. The pointer is now at byte 5 of the buffer. Point 3 represents the pointer position after the first move command. The pointer is now at byte 6, which is the first byte of the quantity. Point 4 represents the pointer position after the second seek command. The pointer is now at byte 11 of the buffer. Point 5 represents the pointer position after the second move command. The pointer is now at byte 12 of the buffer, which is the first byte of the product name. Point 6 represents the pointer position after the third seek command. The pointer is now at byte 19 of the buffer. Point 7 represents the pointer position after the third move command. The pointer is now at byte 20 of the buffer, which is the first byte of the product code. Point 8 represents the pointer position after the fourth seek command. The pointer is now at byte 24 of the buffer. Point 9 represents the pointer position after the fourth move command. The pointer is now at byte 25 of the buffer, which is the first byte in the unit. Point 10 represents the pointer position after the fifth seek command. The pointer is now at byte 27 of the buffer. Point 11 represents the pointer position after the fifth move command. The pointer is now at byte 28 of the buffer, which is the first byte in the unit price. You should now have a general understanding of how to read multiple items in one transaction. The flow diagram below illustrates the steps in our transaction view. Once you update the server from the transaction editor, you should see the new tag block and the tags under it.